Father God, as we tell the story about your son, Jesus, Father God, as we go and tell the story, how we got over. As we go and tell the story how Jesus has brought us through, we thank you, Lord. Father God, because of that good story, we can say that we gathered this morning into the house of worship to receive the great news. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can open up our mouth and our hearts and receive that good story. Father God, bless each and every one of us this day, Lord. Open up our hearts that we may receive the word of the good news. Father God, when it's over, Lord, help us to go out and tell the story how we got over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I hear that song, there's a chill run through my body and I believe it ran through your also because of that story we can look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and say thank you the first Sunday after, the first Sunday after the epiphany which is found in uh, the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter in which Brother Herbert Milligan read so beautiful for our hearing this morning. The good news. I'm only going to reread three verses. The 48th, the 49th, and our theme will be coming from the 45th verse. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I sought thee, sorrowing. This is what Jesus said to her. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? With ye not that I must be about my father's business? But why I said the 45th verses, that's where our theme is coming from. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Our theme for this morning, their turn back. When they find that their son Jesus was not in their presence, they turn back seeking him, seeking to find him, which they thought were lost. Now this is a very an extremely important passage, an arrested passage, because it is the only passage that covered Jesus' childhood. It is important for it give us the first known time that Jesus claimed to be the Messiah. 
the lesson found within the passage are inexhaustible. When people travel to the festival in Jerusalem, they would do so as a community immersed with the women and children leading the way in order that none would be left behind. I think there is something in that for us to consider in the realm of the church life, as we must not leave behind any who are younger in age or younger in the Lord on our journey towards heaven. However, thinking Jesus was traveling with his cousin or other members of the extended family, Mary and Joseph were unaware he has remained behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it, under the inspiration of the Spirit, Luke is careful to refer to Mary as Jesus' mother, but not to Joseph as his father. But they're supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey and they sought him among their kinfolks and acquaintances. Mary and Joseph came from the Passover, which spoke directly of Jesus, the Passover lamb. But they didn't perceive he wasn't with them. I wonder how often we leave our own time of worship on a Sunday or Wednesday, supposing Jesus to be with us. But in reality, our hearts are far from him. You know, when we come to church on Sunday to worship, we go through the motion. We go, we think about everything about worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of us even take a little nap during the service. Some of us talk to the person on the other side about what happened during the past week. Instead of focusing on the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God whom we worship, But as they were in Jerusalem celebrating the Passover, having a good time, killing the lamb, eating and drinking. But Jesus at 12 years old became a man now and his heart was not what was going on in the street of Jerusalem. His heart was what was going on in the synagogue. And as the scripture said, as they're 
get to Jerusalem, Jesus went directly into the synagogue. But Mary and Joseph didn't know this, didn't understand what was going on, but Jesus did. Jesus knew that he was sent into a sinful world to save sinners. He went into the synagogue among the doctors, theologians, and all of those great men. Probably Nicodemus was there. Gamaliel was there. Another great man, other great theologian, was in the synagogue discussing what was going on. And Jesus just sat there listening, hearing them, and asking them questions. See, church, sometimes we have to ask questions. But before we ask the question, we're going to have to sit and see what it's all about. But as time goes on, as the festivity was over, and they headed back toward whence they came, they followed the same order the, the women and the children lead the way. And the men in the rear make sure that no one is left behind. But see, we can get distracted sometimes. Mary and Joseph know that long as they was among kinfolks and family members, their son Jesus was, will be well taken care of. But as night approached, And Mary and Joseph sought to find Jesus so that they could take care of him, feed him, and do the mother and fatherly care for their son. They realized that Jesus wasn't there, not around no one. And you know if that happened, to one of us, when we look up for our kids among the crowd, and we find them not, oh, what a worrying we're going to get in ourselves into. Mary and Joseph search for their young son. They search and they search. And I can hear Mary said to Joseph, Joseph, I'm not going no farther. My son Jesus is missing. I can hear they're talking to the crowd. He said, y'all go ahead. But I'm going to turn back and I'm going to find my son Jesus. And when they find out him and not, when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And when you, same thing with us, when you feel out of touch with Jesus, when you're wondering where he is, it's always a good idea to do what Mary and Joseph did. Go back to the place where you saw him last. Go back to Jerusalem. And the scripture tells us they search and they search for Jesus. I can imagine Mary said to Joseph, he said, well, we searched the streets of Jerusalem. And I can hear Joseph said to Mary, he said, you know, Mary, 
He said, the last time I saw Jesus, he was standing at the synagogue doors. He was standing there, gazing inside. Mary said, well, let us go in and take a peep into the synagogue. And as they went in after three days of searching, they find their son sitting among the doctors, among the lawyers, among the great teachers, listening and asking questions. And when they found Jesus, three days after three days, three days speaks of the resurrection, like Mary and Joseph. The disciple thought they had lost Jesus, like Mary and Joseph, the woman at the tomb, didn't know where to find him. But un unlike Mary and Joseph, after three days, they didn't find him. He found them. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting um, in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. I can believe that Jesus asked them, said, why are you here? Why are you doing this and doing that? Mary and Joseph walk over to Jesus, look him in the eyes. Mary said, son, he said, what you are doing, you don't know what you are doing to your father and I. Jesus looked at Mary and said, I'm going to set you straight, mother. Joseph said to Mary, why you are seeking me? Don't you know that I am about my father's business? Jesus told him, said, that's why I came into the world to do the will of him that sent me. Mother, I'm not respected of you. I know that you are my mother, but I came to do the will of my heavenly father. And I'm going to do the will of my heavenly father. I came to tell the good news. I came to heal the sick. I came to raise the dead. I came to give life to those that are lost. I came to go to the cross of Calvary. That's what I came to do, the good will of my heavenly Father. And as Mary looked Jesus in the eye, Jesus said, I respect you, Joseph, but I must do the will of my Father, heavenly Father. You see, Jesus wasn't disrespect to Mary, but he just like Mary know that his heavenly father is more important to him and to do the will that he came to do. And that's what we should be doing. Be doing the will of our heavenly father. Do the will of him that has sent us. Go out and tell the good news. Go out, help those that are in need. You see, we do some every kind of thing except doing the will that our Heavenly Father want us to do. Look what's going on in the world today. We should go out and tell sinners, tell others, just hold on because everything is going to be all right. Don't worry about what happened on Wednesday. God is going to take care of it. Our Trump is going to have to give an account for what for he and that mob has done. We go out and tell others, don't follow him just because he is president, because he is lying to us. But go out and tell them the good news. Tell them that the Lamb of God is now, God came into the world that he may sacrifice his life for us. Tell him that Jesus took it upon himself to go and go to Calvary and take 
take on the role that God has sent him for. Tell him that Jesus went on and take everything that those cru cru crucial men had put on him. Tell him he won every battle that he fought with those religious leaders. Tell him that when you are a child of God, you can walk through all. Tell him that everything is going to be all right. Tell them in the street, just hold on just a little longer. Tell them that everything is going to be all right. Tell them that this pandemic is going to be over soon. And all of us can come back into the house of God. Tell them, just hold on just a little bit longer. Tell them, let's go and sing the sweet song of Zion. Tell them, come and listen to the gospel. But when we listen, just don't keep it to ourselves. Let's go and tell others who refuse to come into the house of the Lord. Refuse to come and hear the good news. We can't save them, but we sure can tell them that Jesus is alive. And he is well. Tell them the good news. And as Mary, as Jesus correct Mary, said, Joseph is not my father, but I respect him. I respect you, Mom. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go with you back home. But I just want to let you know that I am about my father's business. And as they went back, Jesus, respect them daily. Jesus submitted himself to the family, knowing that who he said he is, knowing that who he's going to do, a young man now, a young man, but he knew that he had come to do, a, uh, to do the will of God that has sent him. So church, let us do our part. Let us go and tell the good news. And when we see, when we see someone has walked away from the faith, let us go and tell them. Have a little talk with them. Tell them the good news. Tell them that just hold on. Don't give up. Everything is going to be all right. But just let's tell them that we must hold on to the hand of God. Go and tell the story. Like that song Kim sang so beautiful a little while ago. Tell it. Tell it whether they want to hear it or not. If they walk away, that's up to them. But as Paul tell us, just hold on just a little longer. We know that everything is going to be all right. And the doctors, the theologian, they were so amazed at this 12-year-old, well, we can say man now, because when the Jewish people get 12, boys get 12 years old in the bar mitzvah, they become a man. Who in the world is this? Who taught him? He didn't go to the seminary. He didn't go to the university. Where did he get his wisdom from? Where did he get all of this knowledge from? You know, when we ask the question, you know what we can tell him? His wisdom and knowledge come from above, come from our heavenly Father, which is in heaven. And you know, we ask, we said, and I'm through, but what about the rest? What happened to Jesus 
after he was 12 years old and went into Jerusalem? What about the rest of his childhood? Didn't the scripture tell us what happened? Didn't he, Rebel? Didn't he tell us? Listen. The 52nd verse. They want to know. Let's go to the 52nd verse. And tell them, bring them up to date on the rest of his childhood. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. And in favor with God and man. He continued to learn as he grew. And his mother Mary humbled herself, didn't say a word. She kept all of these things in her heart. You know, Mary and Joseph. Sometimes they thought that Jesus was crazy. They thought that Jesus didn't know what he was saying. But as it goes on in life, they'll find out. And as we get older, we learn more and more. We never stop learning. We are just like that. We grow in wisdom, statue, and in God, and in man. If we don't, we are defeating the cause. But when we find a Christian who has departed from the faith, let us turn back. Go back to the last place where we saw them. When our burdens get too heavy for us, let us stop. Didn't know where Jesus is. Let us stop, turn back, and go where we spoke to him last. And believe me, I promise you, that Jesus will do like he did to the disciple and the woman at the tomb. They didn't find him, but he found them. But we must turn back. Don't leave a person out there hanging out there. Don't know what where to turn. When we can go out there and help them, we must turn back. And go and help our brothers and sisters. Don't talk about them. Don't stab them in the back. Let us go out, take them by the hand, talk with them, pray with them, and say, come on back. Come on back to that great Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. They turned back and they found his son among the doctors, the theologians, along the teachers, great men. But Jesus was more greater than all of them, even at the age of 12. Jesus had the wisdom, knowledge of his heavenly father. Not only that, he was respectable to his mother and father. He went and Joseph taught him to be a great carpenter. But Jesus knew just in a little while after Joseph had died, he had to go and do the will of him that sent him. He must be about his father's business. They turned back, went back to Jerusalem, and after three days they found him. That's what we should do. Go out there and find sinners and come and introduce them to the Lord. May God bless you. Give me you Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Everything else 
can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees, crying out to you, so give me you, everything else can wait, give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Lord.